in the next step, we will export everything via STL to Blender. So in Blender, we can create this uh, structured surface. And then we also use the actual photos as a render target. And we will rebuild also the packaging and then do, for example, this rendering. <laughs> Again, when you want to get, get good at rendering, try to build something you have a photo off and then use the photo as a reference. Okay, so let's go to Fusion. Here I will export this safe as STL. Mm, I will go with not low, I will go with high actually in this case. I want to have a really nice good surface. And because I set high for the first one, and now I have to continue high at least with this one and this one that goes high too. Okay, and then these two. Oh, okay, I can't export both. Okay, so number one and number two. Very good. That was it. So there are all my parts. Let's fire up Blender. So I'm quickly showing you this kind of like where we will be at one point. So we will create an, a surface that has 30 squares and then the appropriate amount vertically. And then that we will project a fold over the body and then via the instancing instance those pyramids over it. So pretty simple actually. Again, this is also another good example to show you why you want to work or know multiple programs because this is now a design where in Fusion we have all the amazing tools to build it really fast, precise, and efficiently. But then this textual detail and the rendering, it's not necessarily very good for it. So we can do this then with the help of Blender. Good. So I will go to File, Import, STL. I know, again, the units is 0 0.001. I forward Z up, desktop, and then I select all those and import them at once. I will set my units to millimeters. Press N and I set my clip start to one millimeter. Very good. Before I continue these two, they do not show up on the other side. I only exported one version because I can simply solve this via a mirror modifier. Okay, very good. So there's all our stuff. The meshing with high actually created a really nice geometry. It's nice and smooth, particularly fillets. They actually come across really good. And also, these vertical bellied out faces, they are nice and evenly meshed, which means this is a perfect geometry to project over. Okay, very good. Um, let's see here, this collection I call Vessel. I make a new collection, I call this one Structure. So I can easily show height the different parts. So I know 30 squares width-wise I need to get onto it. So Shift S, cursor to world center, Shift A, plane in edit mode. So I press tab. With S, I scale this down. 
has to be tiny. Okay, then I leave edit mode. Now wait, I'll go back to edit mode. I press R, X, and 90, rotate it. Okay. And then this is still too big, but I can move it to here. And I move it to there. So it is actually outside. I will create a pattern via the array command. And it should be 30. And you will see this is too big. So let's scale this one down, maybe to there. Very good. And then let's add another array modifier. But instead of uh, y, uh, x1, we make uh, z minus 1. Yeah, so it goes down. And then we can add as many as needed. So what I'm doing here right now is I try to simply position this so it's nicely centered. Looks like I can have one more so that the distances are okay, but no, looks like maybe, uh, maybe like this. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah. yeah, let's keep it this way. So I wanted to create a pattern, so all these edges are pretty good. Shift D, G, and Z, move this one down. Let's take a look at how many we can squeeze in here. Yeah, so they were similar. Yeah. Hmm. Ideally, we want to have one more there. That's a little bit of, we might have to adjust the design in Fusion. Um, for our sake, we don't do this. Let's simply try to get this close. Very good. Okay. That actually looks pretty good. So you see that this is a rectangle. To verify that is actually not only a rectangle, but a square, if I turn this off, these values should be the same. They are, it's also 2.2 millimeters. So that's good to know. So check this out. Shift S, uh, cursor to select it. It moves the cursor to the center of this original square because there we want to position a cube. This cube we will make uh, size 2.2. Uh, yeah, very good. And then we can go into edit mode and do the following. So I go to your top view and go to wireframe. Eh, you don't really see that thing. So what I try to do is G and Y. I move this maybe a little bit further away. And then I select these points and say, I want to merge those. Do, do, do. Vertex, merge, 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 merge vertices at center. Bing. There we have a pyramid. This is maybe a little bit too pointy. So G and Y, we make this a little bit flatter. One more G and Y. Okay, good. Nice. So the next thing we need to make sure is that this one is really well centered. And we could eyeball this, but we want to do this a little bit better. So this object is. 66.3 millimeters. First, what we will do is, you see this has a scale factor, so apply scale. We do the same for this, apply scale. Okay. Um, so 66.3, I can press uh, Shift S, cursor to select it, uh, sorry, cursor to world origin. Shift A, make a plane. And then this plane is 66.3. A bit 
up. See that actually helps me to align the square. I'm actually incredibly close. I have good eyes. Let's do the snapping. We set the snapping to vertex. Very good. I select this and this one too. This is the x-axis, so G and X, G and X, hold control. We try to snap to this point. There we are. Very good. So then this one we ooh, yeah, this one we can select and delete. So now this is actually perfectly centered. Next step we go to shrink wrap and say you shrink wrap on this one. Um, please use project positive and negative. That should be it. And we will turn this off for a second. Because the pyramid here, Sh I will Alt D, so not Shift D, Alt D, make a clone, escape, G and Z, move this down, and then G and Z and hold control and snap it to there. Alternatively, I could also Shift S, cursor to select it, select this, Shift S, selection to cursor. Okay, so back to here, we select this, Shift select this, and we parent it so we can do our instancing. This also has no scale factor, very good. Then object instancing faces. Oh, look at that. Um, what do we have to do here? We might have to rotate this one. So shift S cursor to select it, go into edit mode, press a to select everything. This is now the x-axis around the 3D cursor Rx90 negative. Okay, very good. There we are. Now we can select this and turn back on the shrink wrap. Bang. There we are. Pretty cool. We can also sync this in. Currently, this mesh is actually on the surface, so so that during rendering it does not show up. Maybe minus zero point one millimeter. See there, we don't see it. Pretty good. Here we do the same. Um, you to you control p for parenting then we then we turn on the this one and then shrink wrap this to there project both directions and minus 0 0.1 a very good well, that looks that looks really really nice. It's actually pretty good. We could uh, let's double check. So the object center is nicely centered, which lines up with the world and also with the this thing. So what we can do is we select this. And after the shrink wrap, we add a mirror modifier along the y-axis, and we use this as the object. There, see, there's no reason to do this two times. We simply mirror it over. Boom. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice and sweet. So we have a small gap here, and that basically is also due because of the fact we have this uh, offset. So minus 0 0.1 brings this one back. If we want to know to close this gap, it's actually really easy to do. So let's maybe go to a side view. 
there's the object center point that is being folded on the surface and then ge the geometry follows it which means if i go into edit mode select everything g and z move this down and we see how this actually adjusts everything and so a little bit there and there we are see so i i kept a tiny gap in between pretty awesome or we can even keep more of a gap let's actually take a look at the products okay now uh, we can't really zoom in enough i might have to take a look at the actual part but there's probably a tiny gap too. And you can even see that sometimes through the manufacturing process, these can be more softened or rounded. Talking about soft or rounded, <laughs> they are kind of pointy and sharp. So how do we fix this? Well, we can add a bevel modifier, not a big deal. We just select the pyramid, add a bevel modifier. This is way too much, 0.01. And maybe two or three, well, maybe not 0 0.01, what about 0 0.1? Ah, there we are. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then we do the same here. So this pyramid we select, Babel modifier 0 0.1, maybe four. Was that the one I had here? Four. Okay, that basically finishes the task of how to create the structure flowing over that surface. You see, we kind of like used the same tool or process um, to create the structure, which now can be 3D printed. Um, <clears throat> and this process is the same we used to simulate bristles in the last two other projects. So it's a pretty universal tool actually with folding something over a surface and then flowing a structure over it. Uh, programs like Rhino or so, they also have uh, the surface flow tools too. They, um, and they work actually really precise and well. Sometimes the problem is with complicated geometry, this can be an, a very, very slow process. And for something like this here, as you can see, the, the deformation process is calculated more or less instantly. And this is still good geometry to send um, to manufacturing or 3D printing. Okay, that's it.